What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2016 Volkswagen Mark 7 Golf R. Today on the Golf R behind me, we're going to be covering how to replace your front wheel bearing hub assemblies. In front of me, I have two Schaeffler brand units. Both come with all the hardware needed to do this job and both are available on fcpeuro.com. Now these are a three bolt design with a built-in washer axle bolt. There are two types of bolts for these, um, some that don't have a washer and some that do. They have two different torque specs, which we'll cover during the install. Once we get to the cover, we're also going to cover a couple ways to diagnose your wheel bearing, but typically as you start going bad, you'll start hearing sort of a wearable sound coming from whichever wheel is affected. As time goes on, it will get worse. You don't want to let it get bad though, because these are what are responsible for holding your wheel to the vehicle. Obviously, aside from the axle bolt, if this completely fails, you could potentially lose a wheel. So once you hear that wheel bearing start going bad, definitely don't let it get bad for too long. This DIY is gonna be applicable to both your Mark 7 and 7.5 .5 Golf Rs, as well as your GTIs. But before we get started on this DIY, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna to need for this job. And now for tools. For this job, we have a half inch breaker bar as well as a half inch ratchet. We have a half inch torque wrench and a 3 8 drive torque wrench. I have a quarter inch and a 3 8 drive ratchet with a couple extensions for both of all the tools up here. Uh, starting from my left, your right, we have a 24 millimeter 12 point socket, which will be used for our axle bolts. We have two different 21 millimeter sockets for our different ratchets, a 17 millimeter socket for our lug bolts. We have a 16, which we'll be using on our ball joints. We have two M12s, one for a half inch drive and one for our three inch drive ratchet, as well as a T30. Moving forward, we have a small screwdriver. I'm gonna be using this kind of as a pry bar, which I'll show you later when we torque down our new axle bolt. I have a hammer and a punch that I will use to drive out the axle. We have a couple of bungee cords and a caliper hanger tool. And then some nice to have, but not detrimental to the job are electric tools. We have an electric impact and an electric ratchet. Some brake clean, we have some liquid molly, ceramic paste, as well as some anti-seize compound. And then a wire brush or a scotch pad will be helpful for cleaning up the work area. And then a paint pen if you wanna mark everything down once you've torqued it. But with that said, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. An easy way to check if your wheel bearings are bad physically is simply by lifting up the vehicle. You wanna take your hand on the top and your other hand on the bottom of the wheel and just kinda of do this, you wanna to try to make it flex. Obviously, if it's flexing, you can hear a little bit of play or feel a little bit of movement, then more than likely your wheel bearing's bad. If you're looking to check your tie rod play where you have it up here, left and right on your east and west will do the trick. We're gonna go ahead and get completely under the golf bar and we'll show you a couple other points where you can go ahead and put your ear to just so you can pinpoint your bearing and make sure it's actually bad. So let's head underneath now. Now we're under the golf bar. One of the things you can do if you're working on the lift, as long as you're being super safe, you can actually run the vehicle, let the wheel spin at idle speed and listen. You can use a stethoscope. If you don't have one of those, you can use a long screwdriver like the one I have in my hand here. But the goal is just to listen for any awkward noise coming from the knuckle area. Now these cars have a small port underneath the axle, which you can see, usually they're a little bit dark. They fill up with grime, but right at the end of that flathead screwdriver, there's an opening that goes all the way through to the bearing side. You can put your tool up to it, put your ear up to it, and listen for any grinding noise coming from the bearing. So Volkswagen was kind enough to leave that port there. Makes it really easy to inspect these. All right, now we have that covered. Let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, we are gonna be working on the front passenger side of the car today. However, the steps are gonna be identical for the driver and passenger side. We're gonna start by removing our 17 millimeter lug bolts. So we got the 17 on the impact. We'll go ahead and zap them off. Now we have our wheel off. Our next step is gonna to be to work on removing our brake caliper and rotor. We're gonna keep the caliper as one. So we'll move over onto the back side of things, grab our 21 millimeter socket, and we'll work on getting the two 21 millimeter bolts off that hold this caliper in place. Before we get behind the brake caliper set up here and work on moving it, I wanted to cover one thing for those of you following along at home. We're gonna be using an impact to zap this uh, axle bolt out. However, for those of you that don't have an impact at home, there is a different way you can do it. And with that, I would recommend using some sort of flathead screwdriver or Phillips head, it doesn't really matter. Something that you can insert in the veins of the rotor. 
You can coat it in some electrical tape or a shop towel so you don't mar up your caliper bracket. But the idea being is that you put the screwdriver in, you let it press up against the caliper, and then you put your 24 millimeter 12 point on a breaker bar and you can use this screwdriver to stop everything from turning so that you can break that bolt free. You don't wanna just turn this and not support the axle in some sort of way. So by using this, this is your leverage to then keep this from spinning and breaking that bolt free. So again, just wanted to mention that before we ripped the caliper off, we're using the impact again today, so that'll zap that off, no problem. Now I'm gonna go ahead and break free both of the 21 millimeter bolts that hold our caliper to our hub here, or our knuckle. I have a 21 on a big breaker bar. These are typically torqued to 200 Newton meters, so they're a little tight, but you can definitely get them off with a good sized bar. Okay, there's the bottom one. I'll hit the top one next. And now with both of those broken free, we'll get a little bit more eye level. We'll zap them out, and then we'll use our caliper hook to hang it off to the side. I'm going to take my 21 on my electric ratchet. A 3H ratchet works fine just for this, but I'm going to quickly zack them out. These can be reused. You just want to clean them if you reuse them. And then with a little wire wheel, some brake clean, anything, you can just get the debris off the threads. All right, now we have those off. We can go ahead and hang our caliper off to the side. Anywhere off the shock or strut is fine. All right, now we have that removed. We're gonna wanna go ahead and work on getting our rotor off. Now with our T30, we'll go ahead and remove that set screw and set our rotor to the side. Just be ready to catch it. If you're worried about dropping the rotor, you can always thread a lug bolt back in just to hold everything in place while you reassess and get ready to pull it off. I'm gonna replace this, I'm gonna to toss this one, but if it came out just fine, you can go ahead and reuse it. Now we have our rotor off. Our next thing here is gonna to be to work on removing our axle bolt. Again, 24 millimeter 12 point. How I mentioned before, using the rotor and the caliper as your stopper, you can do that way, or you can use an impact gun and zap it off. All right. With our axle bolt out, one thing you can do now is either use the axle bolt to help drive the axle itself out of the hub assembly, or you can use a punch and a hammer. Um, I'm gonna go ahead with the punch and hammer method first and see if we have enough play to break that free. Uh, thing being is sometimes if you don't position this correctly, if you leave it too few threads out, you can risk damaging the threads on the axle. So I'll take a brass punch, which won't hurt anything with a hammer and see if I can break that axle free inside from the hub assembly. Started to come out no problem, so I know it will. Uh, if you need to, go ahead and hit it with some penetrating fluid before you get to that point. Now, before we work on removing the ball joint or anything next, while I have you guys here, we have the ends of the three bolts exposed that come through the back for the actual hub assembly, wheel bearing and hub assembly. I'm gonna take a wire brush scuff them up a little bit and with a little bit of penetrating fluid and let those soak while we work on our ball joint removal. So again, wire brush works fine. Whatever you have just to get some of the oxidation or rust off of the end of the threads here will help when they come through the other side. Alrighty, while we let that soak, we're gonna raise the vehicle up and then we're gonna work on freeing up the ball joint from the control arm so we have a little bit of play in this whole assembly so we can work that axle out. So let's do that next. Moving on to the ball joint, we have three 16 millimeter nuts that we want to remove. I'm gonna break them free with my ratchet and then I'll zap them off with the electric ratchet. With those removed, now we can pull our control arm down Throw our flashlight on the ground. And our axle should just pop out 
from our hub assembly. Now you don't want to let this dangle. We're going to go ahead and grab our bungee cord and we're just going to suspend it the same way we did our caliper. I'm just going to take my bungee cord, wrap it around the end here, and just hang it off the spring on our coilover. And I'll just keep it suspended. You could go ahead and grab a triple square and remove the bolts that hold the half shaft to the transmission. I don't really recommend it unless it's truly in your way, but it should be more than enough room to work with. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to work on actually breaking the three M12s that hold this hub assembly to our knuckle. Before you do that, I recommend you take one of the studs from the ball joint and just feed it back into the control arm like this. This will just keep everything a little bit more stable and secure so you're not stressing out the top of your shock or strut or coilover, whatever it is that you're actually working on and any of the other components. So with that situated, we're going to get nice and personal behind our knuckle here and we'll work on breaking the three M12s free and removing this hub assembly. Now we have a good view of our three M12 bolts. Whatever you do, whatever tool you're using, you want to make sure you have it fully seated in the head of the bolt. The last thing you want to do is risk stripping one of these because then you're going to be in the world of hurt. So I'm going to use my half inch uh, ratchet and the half inch drive M12 to break free as many of these as I can and may switch over to the 3 8 and use a uh, maybe the end of a jack pull or something to break the hardware free. It's a little bit tight on there, but once you break it free, you can easily get them out by hand or the electric ratchet. So M12 times three. You may also need to support the assembly a bit so you don't put too much stress on everything else as this moves around. So just keep that in mind. We'll start with this bottom one first, get it seated in there properly. That one's nice and loose. We can zap that one out. Now let's move over to this one right here. Again, I'm supporting the knuckle here with my arm, with my hand, I mean, so I'm not putting too much stress on anything else. That one's nice and free. And then for the top one, our combo is a little bit too big, so I'll move over to the 3 8 drive end of a floor jack just to help act as a breaker bar so we can break that free easily. And now with that free, we should be able to zap all three of these bolts out. I'll catch the hub on the other side with my other hand and we can start working on the cleanup. And bam, easy as that. Here's our old hub assembly. This looks to be original. It's pretty cruddy, pretty rusty. So definitely uh, doesn't hurt to do this as preventive maintenance. Again, this car's at 90,000 miles. Didn't show any real signs of it starting to fail, but can't hurt to do them. So we'll get you over on the other side. We'll clean up our work area and then we'll work on installing our new hub. All right, my good people, at this point, our objective is gonna to be to clean up our area. Doesn't hurt to clean your dust shield while you're here, get some of that old brake dust off. But our main focus is gonna be this area right here. We wanna be mindful of our ABS sensor, which ours is still in place. There's no need to remove it. However, that is totally an option if you're doing this job by removing the whole knuckle assembly. Down here, you can see the small opening. That is like an inspection cover. Uh, well, it's not a cover. It's more of an inspection opening that you can use to put your stethoscope or your long flathead screwdriver to if you're running the car in the air trying to listen for a bad wheel bearing like we mentioned at the beginning of the video. So you want to make sure that's nice and clean. So we'll grab our scotch bright pad. We'll grab our wire brush. We'll clean up the mating surfaces a bit clean this all up nicely, and then we'll work on installing our new wheel bearings. So I'll use a small wire brush just to clean up the face of this work area a bit. Yeah, no need to go crazy. So obviously not that, not that bad here. Use a little bit of APC. All that soaks, I'll take my Scotch-Brite pad and just very lightly clean up the mating surface in here. 
our, our hub and bearing assembly is going to sit flush. Again, I'm not scraping the sensor, I'm just cleaning around it. I'll give everything a light spritz with some brake clean. Before we go ahead and install our new hub assembly, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of liquid moly ceramic paste to this mating surface so that the next time this job's done, the uh, whole assembly comes off nice and easy like it did for us today. This car is still fairly new, so I didn't expect it to fight us, but you never know. So a little bit of paste. With that situated, I'm just going to go ahead and mount the hub assembly to our knuckle here. I'll get one bolt started by hand from the back, and then we'll move back to the back of the uh, knuckle and tighten down all three of our M12s. I'm gonna take my M12, feed it from the back, and feed my hub assembly to the knuckle, and just get it started by hand. Good bite here. All right, at this point we have all three of our M12 started. Let's get back underneath the golf bar. We'll go ahead and snug them down evenly with the electric ratchet. We're only putting like 10 Newton meters of force into them and then we'll go ahead and torque them down properly. So let's get to it. For this top one, I do need the slight extension. Now we're gonna work on torquing these down to 70 Newton meters plus an additional 90 degrees. We'll start with this top one. Two. Again, I'm holding the whole assembly in my right hand so we're not binding the strut left and right, putting too much pressure on that top hat there. All right. Now we have all three torqued down to 70 Newton meters. Uh, there's adapters out there that you can use. However, the space is a little bit tight in here. Um, some torque wrenches have angle mode on them that you can use, especially the electronic ones. For us, we're just gonna use a small dot on our hardware, like so. With those marks, we can use those as our reference points to let us know once we have rotated our bolt 90 degrees. So I'm gonna switch over to my half inch drive ratchet with the half inch drive M12 bit, and I'll use that to rotate these a little bit more. And for the top one, I'm gonna go back to my three-eighths combo along with the end of my jack pole. All right. Now with that last one buttoned up, we can mark that one down as well. And now while I have you here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of that Liquid Molly anti-seize compound on the threaded portion of the axle. And then I'll go ahead and remove the ball joint stud from the control arm. And we'll just work on feeding our axle back in. So you can go ahead and just lose the control arm now while we're here. I'll peek over to the other side real quick. Literally just putting on a small dab of this anti-seize the most minimal amount. This isn't mandatory, but I like to do it again. We live in New England. Should this car ever see any salt, this will just keep it easy for the next person that does this job. Now we can go ahead and work on feeding our axle back in. Get off of our bungee cord. You rotate the hub until the splines line up. And 
then you can literally just tap the hub towards your axle. And this is beautiful, it almost self-aligned the ball joint ends. And voila, my good people. The anti-seize definitely helps with that. While I have you down here, we're gonna go ahead and resecure the three 16 millimeter nuts on our ball joint. So let's go ahead and do that. We have our three 16 millimeter nuts. Then I'll just use the electric ratchet and the 16 to snug them down real quick. Then we're gonna to torque all three down to 40 Newton meters, plus an additional 45 degrees. And then 45 degrees. Again, I already have existing marks on the nuts. I'll use those as my reference, but you can always use a little dab of a paint pen or marker for that. Or there's adapters for the torque wrenches that you can use for angle mode and some wrenches themselves have an angle feature on there. So just keep that in mind. Give it a couple fresh marks. All right. With that buttoned up, my good people, we're gonna get eye level with the car again, or our hub assembly, and we'll work on getting that bolt started and we'll put our brakes back on. We'll tighten everything down. So. Let's get to it. All right, my good people. At this point, we have our hub bearing assembly bolted to the knuckle. We have our ball joints resituated. All that stuff is looking good. Before we work on putting on our brakes, I just want to go ahead and hand start the new bolt for our axle. And then once we get it in a few threads, we'll use the impact just to snug it up gently. That way we don't risk losing the axle through the back for some reason. Not that I think it will happen, but just good insurance. So we'll take our 24 millimeter 12 point and we'll just give it a couple zaps with the gun to snug it up in the meantime. That's perfect. It's in most of the way. That's all we need. Now I'm going to take a little bit of liquid moly ceramic paste and just coat this area so that our rotor does not seize to the hub. Keeps everything nice and protected. I highly recommend you use some whenever you're doing brakes or putting on your wheels, mounting, dismounting, Helps just keep everything nice and fresh. Now we can grab our rotor and we'll get our T30 ready with our set screw and we'll work on putting that back on. I also like to put a dab of paste just on the seat where the set screw sits, kind of helps keeping that from seizing to the rotor itself. And then we'll just go ahead and snug this down by hand. For those of you following along at home, the torque spec would be eight Newton meters, should you want to torque these down. Hand snug is good. And then, you know me by now, I like to overkill this and encapsulate it in some paste. That way, next time these have to come off, Hopefully moisture has stayed out and they come off just as easy as they did for us today. Okay. Now with that, we're gonna grab our two 21 millimeter bolts. I've already gone ahead and just cleaned them using a wire wheel brush, cleaned up the threads. We'll go ahead and get ready to situate our caliper back onto our knuckle here and get those started. Okie dokie. Don't forget to take off your caliper hook if you use one or your bungee cord. Last thing you want to do is be driving down the road and hearing some funny noises coming from your wheel wells. Okay, there's one. There's two. We'll snug them up with the electric impact real quick. Or electric ratchet, I should say. Now we'll take our torque wrench. Again, 200 Newton meters for your caliper carrier bolts. There's two. Mark on that one. 
little mark on that one. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, we can go ahead and torque up this bad Johnny right there. So let's get to it. I have the car elevated so I can use my body weight to help torque that down if you're working on the ground. Um, one thing you can do is put the wheel on. Just keep in mind though, you don't wanna put any load on the bearing without this bolt being tight. You're gonna shorten the lifespan of that bearing. So I'm gonna use just the car suspended and my force to get that secured. Um, if you are gonna put the car on the ground and use the car's weight to kind of hold everything, I would recommend snugging this up a bit more with either a breaker bar or the impact before you go full bore on the ground. So what I'm gonna do since I'm working in the air, so I'm gonna take a screwdriver. I just wrapped this in some shop towel so I don't mar the paint on the caliper, but I'm gonna stick the screwdriver in between the cooling fins on the rotor, and I'm gonna use the caliper carrier and the bracket or the caliper itself to be my like stops so that the rotor doesn't spin on me. That way we don't spin the axle and put any stress on any of the other components that don't need to be stressed for this. So that's gonna go there. We're gonna take our 24 millimeter 12 point. Torque wrench is set to 200 Newton meters. Just keep in mind there are two style bolts like we mentioned at the beginning of the video. For the bolts that don't have a built-in washer, you're gonna be looking at torquing these down to 70 Newton meters plus 90 degrees. It's a pretty drastic difference. For the most part, I think most vehicles have this style bolt. But again, just keep that in mind before you torque your hardware down. So 200 Newton meters. We'll go ahead and torque that down first. And then with that, we're gonna make a small mark on our bolt. And then we're gonna to wanna to rotate it another 180 degrees. For that, I'll switch over to our big breaker bar and we'll go ahead and do it now. Beautiful. With that, can't hurt to make a small mark on the inside of the wheel hub so your paint marks line up. Then we can pull this out and now we can get the car eye level. We'll put our wheel back on and then we'll lower it and torque down our lug bolts. Now with that all buttoned up, we can go ahead and throw our wheel back on. and we'll start all five of our lug bolts by hand. The last thing you wanna do is cross thread the threads on your brand new hub here. Now we can go ahead and torque our lug bolts down to 122 Newton meters or 90 foot pounds. And there you have it, my good people. Another DIY in the books. Overall, a really straightforward job on the Mark 7. Again, today we worked on the passenger side, but the driver's side is gonna be identical. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, or there's a specific job you wanna see be done on the Mark 7 behind me, leave it in the comment section below. And if you like this DIY and you wanna see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.